A couple weeks ago, Minnesota became the 33rd state in the union to adopt what's called a transgender policy when it comes to student athletes. Now, Title IX actually already allowed high school girls to compete in boys' high school sports if girls were not offered an equal opportunity in sports. That's kind of what Title IX was, a law for equal opportunity. So this policy in Minnesota doesn't address that. This policy in Minnesota addresses letting boys who would identify themselves as girls, even though they were born boys, remain boys, to participate on girls' athletic teams. Now, religious schools are going to be exempted from this particular policy, but the 500-plus public schools across the state of Minnesota will be included in this policy. Now, basically, transgender athletes will get their determination by a doctor's note. They will have to have some kind of a note from a physician or psychiatrist that is treating them that says that they do, in fact, identify themselves as female. And again, we are talking about male students participating on female sports. Title IX already guarantees any woman the right to participate on a men's team, provided they do not have an equal opportunity team. That's why a girl can play on a boys' football team. A girl can wrestle on a boys' wrestling team. I was a high school wrestler that came in contact with, uh, I never personally had to wrestle a woman. I was a heavyweight, and that would have been a little bit odd, and, to say the least. But it came up at, mm, there was a couple teams that had girls that wrestled, and it seemed like at every big tournament, at least one or two weights would have a woman wrestling in it. Now, the main argument for people against this procedure is fairness. Let's face it, men are physically bigger than women for the most part, physically stronger. I think most people understand the basic physics and physiology of that. They feel that this could give an unfair advantage to men that decide to compete in women's sport. But let's really talk about the numbers. How many people does this really affect? We're the 33rd state to do this. Well, there is no actual numbers out there. This is the best that I could find. According to Minnesota Public Radio News, they reported that in the United States of America over the last 12 months, only five transgender students that were male wanted to play and applied to play in a female team. Five across the whole country. The UCLA Law School Williams Institute, which is kind of the unofficial transgender type law center in the United States, according to a 2011 study, said that 0.3 or Point, yes, 0.3% of the United States population identifies themselves as transgender. That translates roughly to about 700,000 Americans. Now, compare that to those who identify themselves as gay or lesbian, that's closer to 3.5 to 4% of the population, which would be much closer to about 8 million people. But what this really is about is about, I think, the blending of everything. Remember when the whole gay marriage thing started, I said that this is going to make other issues, other dominoes fall. This is the start of it. Defining male and female, blurring that together, forming a grade there, just like between a man and a woman in marriage, that's become grade. There are things like transgender, hermaphrodite, things like this, terms that we probably never thought of with schools 10, 15 years ago in sports that we're now using. What do you think this is going to go in the next 10 or 15 years? I don't know. That's what scares me. How far will the walls go? At what point do we help these children that are probably dealing with some type of mental confusion, mental illness, sexual trauma, psychological trauma or something to have this inefficiency or inability to identify which gender they are? It is pretty much natural. Look at nature. I don't know how many transgender animals there are out there. That being said, I empathize with these children. But if we're talking about such a minuscule number that probably need help? Do we really need a whole policy here in the state of Minnesota to deal with it? If we're talking five across the country, are these kids clamoring to play on these sports teams? And even if they are, shouldn't we leave these up to the individual districts as a whole? Now, I understand the school districts are saying, no, we were looking for guidance on this. We wanted guidance from the state of Minnesota. So hopefully they have their guidance. I just think this is an un unnecessary policy and further confuse kids instead of helping kids.